Living a Life of Zero Tolerance, DUI and Your Right to Drive, Part 1 Nobody can deny being aware of the risks posed by consuming alcohol and other substances. You are better informed about the risks than most people because you have seen every video in this section. Do you choose to overlook those risks like so many people before you did in order to go forward? Or, do you swear to adopt a zero tolerance policy for alcohol and drugs in your daily life? Drinking alcohol and using some recreational drugs might not be against the law, depending on your age and where you live. However, these behaviors will always be detrimental to your physical and psychological well-being. Additionally, even though consuming alcohol is different from drinking and driving, the former frequently results in the latter. As you can see, drinking too much leads to shaky judgment and reckless actions. Even if you might think you wouldn't drive after drinking now, alcohol consumption can change your perspective on everything. When intoxicated, it is impossible to recognize your limits. Lives are ruined by drunk driving. This frequently refers to both the drunk driver's own life and the lives of other people. You run the chance of killing yourself, a loved one, a friend, or a complete stranger if you decide to drive while inebriated and choose to disregard the dangers, and the law. You can wind up in jail, lose your driving privileges, become bankrupt, suffer catastrophic injuries, or be rejected by your friends, family, and community. These are very real, obvious hazards, not improbable outcomes. While it may not always be simple, guarding against these undesirable results is at least simple. Avoiding alcohol altogether is the simplest, healthiest, and most efficient strategy to prevent drunk driving. Suppose you do consume alcohol? Even if you are completely dedicated to abstaining from alcohol, you must take into account the risk that you might alter your mind later. If you do drink, you need to know how to keep from doing something risky, like deciding to drive drunk. Keep in mind that alcohol will cause you to lose your sense of judgment and prevent you from understanding how drunk you are. If you consume alcohol at a party or at home, you could subsequently feel tempted to drive yourself or your friends to a restaurant or just home. None of these behaviors excuse driving while inebriated. You must not drive, even if you are anxious to get home before your curfew and do not want to upset your parents. If you have been drinking and are tempted to drive, consider which of these consequences would be worse because alcohol distorts your views and impairs your ability to balance your options. Making your parents angry or horrifying them by dying in a drunk driving accident? Killing a stranger or disappointing a friend? Missing a party or spending 10 years in prison for vehicular manslaughter is more costly. The truth is that there will always be other perfectly fine choices available to you regardless of how desperately you feel the need to drive. Anything is preferable to driving while intoxicated, even if your alternative options aren't the best. Take a cab instead. Drinking alcohol does not have to prevent you from going any place you want, including home, seeing your friends, and going home, providing you are in a fit state to do so. Even though you might not be able to drive alone, you can still find a ride. Take turns being the designated driver with your pals to make sure you always have a ride home. There are many different methods to go home even if you haven't prepared ahead and nobody else is sober enough to drive. For illustration. 1. Take the bus or a cab. The majority of towns and cities offer late night cab services in addition to public transportation. Even if you reside on the other side of the state, your life is more valuable than the expense of a taxi ride home. Two. Make a call to a friend or relative. Anybody who cares about you would prefer that you phone and request a ride instead of driving yourself home after drinking. It is usually preferable to avoid taking your automobile with you in the first place because if you did, arranging a ride home will require leaving your car where it is and picking it up the next day. However, returning the next day to pick up your automobile is not uncommon and many people do it. A car left overnight in a secure location is much less likely to sustain damage than one driven by a drunk driver. The alternate is to remain where you are if you can't get a ride home after drinking. Even while sleeping on a sofa or the floor isn't as comfy as sleeping in your own bed, you will survive the night undamaged. If you've had a few drinks at home and are inclined to go for a drive, resist the urge. Going to your favorite restaurant or skipping a social function won't kill you, but driving while intoxicated surely might. Living a life of zero tolerance, DUI and your right to drive, 
Part 2. Providing a safe designated driver. On a night out with your pals, being the designated driver role is not one to be taken lightly. You will have to take care of the people you are with because they won't be able to make wise decisions or take care of themselves while intoxicated. If you're the designated driver, you have to. 1. Do not drink. Don't consume any booze, even a sip. Learn more about your team. Before people start drinking, make sure you are aware of who you are accountable to. In case someone becomes so drunk they pass out or can't remember where they live, make sure you have addresses and emergency contacts for every passenger. Avoid being sidetracked. Inform your passengers that unsafe behavior will not be accepted in your vehicle. Recognize your limitations. Make sure you don't agree to transport more people than your vehicle can accommodate securely. Make sure no one else has access to a car and keep your keys away from your passengers. Before anyone starts drinking, come to an understanding regarding gas money, meals, and the time you want to be departing at the end of a night. The best chance for a conflict-free designated driving experience is to follow these instructions. However, be aware that things might not go as planned for your evening. Even if your friends start bickering or someone becomes sick in your car, you still have a duty to get everyone home safely. Remember to inform your servers that you will be driving when you go to restaurants, pubs, or clubs as a designated driver. Usually, servers and bartenders are careful not to serve alcoholic beverages to designated drivers. If you're fortunate, you might even receive free soft drinks. Beware of alcohol poisoning. The designated driver's duty to keep an eye out for indications of alcohol poisoning in others is also crucial. Call 911 if you observe any of the following signs. Sluggish heartbeat. Uneven or sluggish breathing. Unconsciousness. Decreased body temperature. Roll a friend who is asleep or only partially conscious onto their side and stay by their side until help arrives. If you notice one of your pals appears to be highly inebriated or has consumed a lot of alcohol, you may start to worry during the evening. In these scenarios, you can gently suggest to your friend to cut down on drinking. Make an agreement with your pals at the beginning of the night that you would call them out if you believe they have consumed too much alcohol. People frequently react better to this if they are aware that an intervention may be forthcoming. In this manner, they are less likely to become hostile or uncooperative when you tell them to stop. Recognizing a drunk driver You should be able to recognize the symptoms of alcohol impairment when you are out for the evening and are sharing a ride with someone else. Even if they swear they are good to drive, never get in a car with someone who appears to be under the influence of alcohol or who may be above the legal limit. If a motorist who has consumed one or two alcoholic beverages is already operating a vehicle, keep an eye out for any of the following mild to moderate alcohol impairment symptoms. Not properly seated in the driver's seat. Excessive gripping of the steering wheel. Lowering the windows when the interior of the car is comfortable. He or she is peering out the window. Loudly playing music. Not looking in the mirrors or the blind zones. Any of these symptoms could be a clue that your driver is under the influence of alcohol. Living a life of zero tolerance, DUI and your right to drive, part 3. Try to gently persuade the motorist to pull over so you can drive or phone a cab while remaining cool. Avoid becoming irate, upset, or aggressive while driving since this may make the situation much more hazardous. Managing societal pressures. At some time in their lives, most people come across social pressure to use drugs or alcohol. Since drinking alcohol is regarded as a regular part of our culture and is practiced by everyone, the urge to do so can be incredibly intense. Additionally, alcohol is portrayed as a good thing in movies, TV shows, commercials, billboards, and other types of media. The media constantly tricks us into believing that drinking alcohol is entertaining, glamorous, and will somehow improve our lives. Although this representation of alcohol can be intriguing, keep in mind that it is never offered in its entirety. Alcohol is frequently portrayed in media such as movies, TV series, and ads as being essential to a fulfilling lifestyle. They display handsome, fun-loving people who are well-groomed drinking during family gatherings and parties. 
They don't depict the side effects of alcohol intake that we are aware of, such as vomiting, stumbling, emotional outbursts, liver damage, and long-term health issues. If you decide to follow the zero tolerance strategy and want to stop consuming alcohol altogether, you will need to constantly remind yourself of these drawbacks. Keep in mind that you are only being influenced by the environment, you do not actually want to drink. Your close relatives and acquaintances may share society's overall perspective on alcohol. You could be more likely to perceive drinking as normal if your family only drinks on special occasions. The decision to refrain from drinking might even appear out of the ordinary. Keep in mind that you are in charge of your life and that only you can determine what is normal for you. Making the decision to abstain from alcohol may be a liberating and uplifting experience if you approach it with the proper mindset. It only takes realizing that giving up alcohol does not result in missing out, rather the contrary, in fact. By labeling you dull or unadventurous or by telling you tales about drinking that portray it as some great activity, people nearby may go out of their way to convince you that's precisely what you're doing. Of course, these individuals are purposefully excluding from their drinking-related stories the hangovers, illnesses, shame, embarrassment, conflict, and danger. By avoiding the harmful effects of alcohol intoxication, you are not losing out, instead, you are doing yourself a great favor. The truth is that drinking has no good consequences. Alcohol is not necessary to have fun, forget your problems, feel self-assured, or form relationships with others. Alcohol consumption really prevents these actions. You will come across as being considerably more intelligent and perceptive than your drunken friends. You'll have the upper hand. That means you won't have to stress about embarrassing yourself, saying something you'll later regret, being forced to do anything you don't want to, or driving while intoxicated. Why, in your mind, would you choose to exchange any of these benefits for regret, sickness, or shame? Additionally, you will be able to wake up feeling completely normal, unlike the others around you who suffer from hangovers, shame, and decreased productivity for days after a night out. In contrast to popular belief, sobriety is something to be cherished. Keep your driving privileges intact. Being proud of your zero-tolerance lifestyle is important. In addition to defending your rights to drive, you are defending your physical, emotional, and social well-being. A big step toward freedom, adulthood, and attaining your goals in life is getting your driver's license. If a police officer even has the slightest suspicion that you are using drugs or consuming alcohol while under the age of 21, you could immediately lose your driver's license. Keep in mind that even responsible individuals who choose to consume alcohol within the law do so at great risk. Alcohol and drugs cause long-lasting impairments that will impede your ability to drive and distort your reality perspective. Simply put, drunk people cannot comprehend danger and consequences as effectively as sober people can. They perform actions they never thought they were capable of, such as driving after drinking. Ask yourself if alcohol fits into the picture of the person you want to become in life. If you're being completely honest with yourself, you'll say no. You have the right to decide whether to use alcohol as an adult. But keep in mind that with adult rights come adult duties. As an adult, a driver, and a responsible citizen of the United States, you have a duty to avoid driving after consuming alcohol.